Let's get to Kong Skull Island. We are going to hear from stars of the film, including Samuel L. Jackson, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, John C. Riley, and the director John Jordan Vogue Roberts after this clip. You're dropping bombs. Mm, scientific instruments. You hear that, boys? We're scientists now. <laughs> you guys are not scientists. We'll then land and make base camp for ground excursions led by Mr. Conrad. Major Jack Chapman. All right. Once on the island, the storm's interference will block all radio contact with the ship. That means we'll be by ourselves. Three days later, the refuel team will meet us here on the north end of the island. So that may be our only safe departure window for an unknown period of time. So, tip for everybody. Don't miss it. Please. It's an origin story, one that's very different from the ones that we've seen in terms of uh, finding this island and realizing there was a whole species of this animal and other animals that are very different than any other animals we've seen, definitely bigger. And being able to sort of trace a history of a whole ecosystem that was very different than any ecosystem that we've seen in any of the other Kong movies. Kong is an icon of motion pictures. He's an icon of the cinema. He's been present in people's imagination since 1933, certainly in, in the minds of audiences and people who love movies. And I think Kong represents so many things. He is the mystery of the unknown, and he's a terrifying force of nature who is also a sentient being with an intelligence we don't understand. And I think we're captivated by that. We're captivated by Kong's power and majesty. I'm a big lover of myth, and every movie that I've done in the last couple of years has all been rooted in stories that are much older than the contemporary telling of them. Um, and so usually that means I end up doing something that's an independent film, but when this script came along and I saw that this was an opportunity to tell these old stories in a way that's bigger and immersive. It's IMAX and it's 3D, it's huge, and we're talking about one of the greatest myths of all time. Um, I, I couldn't resist. There's something wonderful about the early 70s and the, the innocence that everybody had at that point. You know, there's a lot of hard lessons that the world and humanity itself learned along the way since the 1970s, but the, it was a little bit more of an innocent time, and I think it was, it was a perfect, perfect way to approach the story, I think. A perfect time to set it in, anyway. The exciting thing to me about Kong Skull Island, when you're asked to describe it, is there's a very simple answer for it, which is that it's a crazy and hopefully inventive, fun action movie that takes people out of their comfort zone and sends them on just a kind of balls to the wall adventure where things are beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. But the thing that's really exciting to me about Kong Skull Island is that there's a bunch of nuances to it and there's a bunch of different sort of genres within the movie. There's a bunch of different characters within the movie that all have their own thing going on and they all are sort of plucked from different movies and put into this one. You know, the, the, the core of this movie to some degree for us is to try and make it as character-based as possible so you're invested in this journey, so you're invested in these people. So as these insane things happen to them, left and right, and as they're confronted with all of these creatures and obstacles and whatever, you care about what's going on. But the thing about Kong Skull Island to me is that it's all of these different things. You know, it is a genre mashup of 70s films and very contemporary films. And, and hopefully we can sort of fuse the, um, the throwback elements and the very modern elements into something that becomes kind of timeless. I like because I went to see it when I was a kid and it was a great story and it was an adventure, and, but it was in the city, you know, and he was on buildings that I could recognize and swatting down planes and he had a little bitty woman in his hand. And it was high adventure for us. So when I had an opportunity to do it, it was like, okay, this should be fun, especially if we're gonna be in a place that's his origin. So it combines a lot of the elements that you know kids like. It's a high adventure story in a jungle, in an unknown place with you know, not just Kong, but other things that might kill you. So it was kind of tempting to get in there and do that. This film will be an immersive spectacle. I think it will be breathtakingly beautiful. It'll be the most thrilling action. It'll feel very rugged and raw and 
exciting. Samuel L. Jackson, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, John C. Riley, and director Jordan Vogue Roberts whew, uh, from Kong Skull Island talking about their brand new film, which we will review for you, lovely folks, right now. So we're going back, what, what was it, 2005 since King 2005, Kong? 2005, yeah. Okay, so 12, 12 years. Well, I mean, we had, the, we had the one in the 30s in 1933. That was yes. the, the original yeah, classic. Yeah, yeah. The one everyone knows, you know, the original tale of Beauty vs. the Beast. Mm-hmm. Then there's one in the 70s, which is meant to be all right. Um, I thought that's meant to be decent, the one with Kurt Russell. Oh, is it Kurt Russell? No, is, yeah. it, is it Jeff Bridges? It's Jeff Bridges, not Jeff Kurt Bridges, Russell. Uh, yeah. Jeff Bridges, yeah. It's meant to be quite good, that. Um, and then there was 2005 King Kong, which a lot of people love. A lot of people think it's an overlong mess full of I terrible to, CGI. I seem to remember as a nine-year-old kid quite enjoying it, even though it was about three and a half hours long. Well, if you long. want to see it again, it's on an ITV every single week. It is. So <laughs> it is yeah. <laughs> you won't be short of times. And now, 17 years, I, no, 12, 12. Not 17, 12 years later, we've got another King Kong. Quite a lot of people have said that this is too soon. Like you go on like the Facebook page for Kong and stuff, and I was looking at the trailer before we watched it, and it's like, oh, why, why, why is is so soon since the last reboot? No original ideas in Hollywood anymore. Mm. It's like you what? could say that about everything, though, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah, like? like twelve years is a long time. Like, a lot there, of there was only about twelve years between the Godzilla films, wasn't there? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Maybe a bit more actually. It's enough but, time. Yeah, about fifteen. Yeah, but 15. still, still. But it's it's enough time, and I think the first thing to refreshingly say is that this is not a story about King Kong getting took off the island and back to New York and falling in love with a girl. It's a very very different story indeed. So basically, um, John Goodman and his uh, team are in. Well, it's back in the Vietnam War times. Uh, the Vietnam was just ended, and obviously America extremely embarrassed by that whole fracas, mm. and uh, <laughs> just to say the least, yeah. and that. There's a nice little line near the start where it's like, I don't think Washington's ever going to go through more turmoil than this uh, ever. Get it? So, so <laughs> I, 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 I just, I, I was a proper like, eh, yeah, moment. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and they go in and they are desperate to get funding for a research mission to Skull Island, which they have, are sure that there is uh, many mysteries within. They finally managed to get on board with a, a research mission, go on, mis- mission, go on their scientific research mission, and they end up going to this uh, place with a security escort, which has got uh, people like Samuel Jackson's Colonel Packard, who's a bit of a, you know, he's, he's just a bit of a Colonel Kurtz type mm. from Apocalypse Now, where he's just, you know, slightly... Slightly insane, a bit. Yes, yeah. yes, just a, just um, just a bit obsessed with um, with winning the wars, and uh, their crew and in, involving well, there's lots of people, including the lad of um, Me Earl and the Dying Girl, Thomas Mann. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. that film it's really good, and uh, they go to this island, and of course they start dropping bombs, and as John C. Riley says in the trailer, John you, don't, C. Riley. you don't go dropping bombs in somebody's house unless you're picking a fight, and naturally King Kong comes and starts swatting the choppers out of the sky, mm. and the the team are then broken into two teams where the Samuel Jackson's uh, group who are going on a sort of Ahab versus the Wheel mission to kill Kong, and the other group with uh, Brie Larson and Tom. Middleston's uh, tracker and photographer who were going just to get to the other side of the island and escape and get away to survive. Of course, that's easier said than done because there's just quite a few beasties on the island, isn't there? Not all of them are a giant gorilla. No. Yeah. No. So, um, you know, I mean, going in this film, I mean, a lot of the criticism from Godzilla, the first film in the monsterverse, was that it was sort of far too sort of really, really reluctant to show you Godzilla massively like I mean I think I watched a video of all the Godzilla scenes on YouTube the other day and it was 8 minutes in total and I think that's uh, considering it's over 2 hours Godzilla it's a remarkable restraint to keep him out of the picture and the other criticism was that the characters were just cardboard and there was nobody to really get behind once Brian Cranston's character spoilers dies mm. and uh, so th- this film had a lot to set right in terms of people wondering what the sort of the tone of the monsters was going to go from there and I think I can happily report that there's a lot of Kong there's, there's a lot, lot of King Kong. and there's a lot of Kong from very early on in the film as well. Yeah, I mean, instantly as soon as they reach Skull Island, they, within within a minute of them starting to drop these scientific instruments, which are just bombs, then Kong just starts swatting them out of the air. And like, not in my house. Mm-hmm. It is a um, yeah. He go he goes pretty he goes pretty hard on them. When you <laughs> when, when you see Kong, I mean, I, yeah. I, I I can't remember much about Godzilla really. I didn't. I thought it was all right, but yeah. uh, when you see Kong come on the screen. Mm-hmm. It's it it's it's genuinely quite breathtaking. It's kind of like, it it's it's the reaction you want to have when you see a giant ape like that. Yeah. It's what you want. You just sort of get that like. <gasps> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just, it's it's stuff like that that just. I mean, the the, the cinematography by Larry Fong is just it's just it, you really get the sense of scale, and that's what Gareth Edwards said so right with Godzilla. He gave the monster such a great sense of scale, and with mm. Kong, he, Larry Fong and and Vote Roberts do that again because you get to see just what a big monkey this man is. Huge. Like this is and the bananas he must eat are huge, like <laughs> or it, lots of really tiny ones. Or lots of really tiny ones. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. Where does, yeah. he, get his, where does he get his bananas from? 
I really don't know. Didn't see any on the island. Yeah. I mean, he just eats octopuses and stuff, doesn't he? Probably. By what you see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he literally does eat an octopus in the film. But um, you yeah. get you get a great sense of scale, and Kong as himself is a great character. I mean, while he isn't sort of that really fleshed out, emotive, almost human character from the Peter Jackson one, he is an extremely expressive character. I think it's it's an amazing work. Um, it's an industry of light and magic who were behind the, uh-huh, the effects. Yeah. It's amazing work done by them to, to bring him to life and get your really empathy and realise that he is the sort of lonely protector because that is role on the island. You know, He keeps these nasty beasties called the skull crawlers who live below the ground away from the surface and spreading across the earth and all sorts of other nasties who are literally just out to eat them. I mean, all, all Kong wants to do in one scene is just go for a drink of water and he's immediately attacked by this octopus. Mm. It's like, you can't catch a break, the poor monk. Poor the poor man, yeah. Aww. like. He just can't can't catch a break. But um, yeah, you get a real sense of scale, but you also get a sense of the danger of him in a sense that after he's grown a bit more, because there's still 40 years between this timeline and the Godzilla timeline, the modern day one, Mm -hmm. he is going to be a formidable four for Godzilla. Yeah, because like, it, it it should be said this is part of a, this sort of new monsters universe. Yeah, monsterverse. In the same way, the DC one kind of came about the thought. Mm-hmm. Oh well, we've made we've made two superhero films now. Yeah. Let's connect them together and make it into mm-hmm. a thing. Obviously, DC is just kind of like pff, wreck and ruin yeah. at this point. But d- but this one could kind of work. This one could definitely. T- I mean, it's it's giant monsters hitting giant monsters and people and creatures. You know what? The, the, like, the, 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 the big the big finale of the film reminded me of what Pacific Rim. Yeah, big massive things hitting each other and you, and yeah. and as an audience member, that's just what you want, isn't it? It's and just I, like it's everyone loves that. Everyone loves Pacific Rim because it is just massive things hitting each other and smashing it and stuff. And I think that just sums up why Kong Skull Island is such a, a beautiful film for me at least because it's just so so much B movie monster yeah. fun. Like it's it's it like the character work, it's there, you know, you get behind the characters, but Tom Hiddleston's tracker and Brie Larson's photographer, they're not given a hell of a lot of, of background no. you know you, there's not really a lot to put in the character who's fleshed out the most is John C. Riley, who's been abandoned on this island John for since the, since the second world war yeah. and he's got a sort of mini story arc that you really get behind and of course there's Samuel Jackson's Packard who has at least two or three shots where he's standing face to face with Kong and he is not backing down because nah. he is Samuel L. Jackson and you do not mess with that man <laughs> he, 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 there's even a sort of few Samuel L. Jackson sort of lines at one point he says hold on to your butts he, yeah Jurassic Park's rollback yep. and there's, <laughs> there's another line where he says something else that's just so oh he he, he, he gets a, a monkey farmer he gets yeah. he, he gets an MF uh-huh. yeah but obviously it's cut through the F because it's, it's 12 years. yeah it's mm. just it's just so much it's so much Samuel Jackson and like you, you don't get behind all of the characters but there is like lots of character quirks and some really good dialogue and you get behind them as a group like Thomas Mann's uh, Thomas Mann's soldier you get behind these sort of these people as a group and you want them to get off the island John Goodman's scientist is um, mysterious enough I like Toby Kebbell's little sort of uh, you know deep south farmer he was nice yeah. but um, it's all about Kong and that monster action and it is so beautifully popcorn B-movie cult like it just uh, it, it's got a breakneck pace going through all the monsters yeah. I mean there's an encounter after encounter after encounter it never lets up and you're just you're breathless by the end of it in, in a good way like mm. you just want to see more of these things, these big things hitting each other. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, let's let's just say how stupid it is. Oh yeah, um, it's ludicrously stupid. Like, <laughs> compare it to King Kong, which is like uber serious, and you know. I mean, Kong, Kong literally gets a tree, wipes off the leaves and branches, and uses it as a baseball bat to hit one of the skull crawlers yeah. in one of the fight scenes. <laughs> yeah. If you I mean, if you understand that and you're behind that, I think you're gonna love this. I've I've got a. As you've sort of we've heard in the show before, I've got a problem with films that are stupid, yeah. and that's the reason why they're supposed to be good. Like that's the sole reason. Like, oh, it's stupid. Oh no, I, I get your logic behind that. But like, this is stupid in a good way because it's actually like fun, and you can tell they've taken it seriously at the same time, and it's not like distractingly stupid. It's just it's just fun, fun stupid, yeah. but actually good at the same time. I mean, uh, character-wise and dialogue-wise. Pretty. Mm. That, there's some really awful dialogue in there, and the characters got nothing at all. See, I thought, I thought the the, hum, the humor and stuff really humor's landed. Good. I think like humor's some, good. Some, of the, some of the dialogue was really crisp. I thought. I think when we I when, really we, when we first saw the trailer, I think we did a film news about it, and we we um we sort of thought that the tone looks a bit strange. I was worried John C. Riley was going to knock. It there off. was a lot of John C. Riley in that trailer, and a lot of John C. Riley cracking jokes. Thankfully, in the film, he's more than comedic value. I mean, obviously, he does bring that comedic value because he's John C. Riley, and he, he just does that yeah. effortlessly. Uh, but he's more than that. I mean, the fact that he's kind of a, a central character to the plot of the film, um, and he can actually act. Let's not forget, he's not just stepbrothers John C. Riley. He's also he's like we're, we're going a long way back to just how brilliant he is. Um, 
and I just I love his I love his voice I love John I love John uh-huh. I'm John C. Riley <laughs> I'm gonna wreck it <laughs> you can tell this was made by a filmmaker as well and not a studio yeah I think there's definite like flair in here there's definitely like shots that have been considered properly it's well crafted there's lovely use of colour I mean the um, the the indigenous people of the island have got the sort of the paint yeah. on their face and, and all that stuff just really really works and makes the film just look like a nice color palette it's not tarzan it's all like gray and brown and dark green it's like vibrant oranges and and like there's really so many apocalypse like apocalypse now color palette oh, shots yeah. like there's yeah. only sunsets and washed out landscape yeah, like, even the poster itself obviously. yeah i mean it's it's a wonderfully colorful film yeah and it evokes a lot of other films i mean it's it there's i mean there's, there's too many to go into really but it's i mean we've seen before kind of a holocaust it yeah direct like, direct reference in there too but we can't say why can't it's, it's obviously horrible yeah. um, <laughs> but um, it's just it's just such a it, it's nice to see such a well crafted blockbuster mm-hmm. you know and one that isn't just like a dull washed out greys and yeah. you know not naming any names but there's plenty of them mm. and, <laughs> but it's just there's so many of them and and this is such a well made well crafted just thoroughly entertaining so it's mm. not, not going for the classic dark and gritty greyish no no, 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 no. it's a nice it, colour colourful it's, actually, it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. fun and light and lively and quite ambitious as well like there's there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of you know it, it does it doesn't just want to be a mindless action film it, it tries to reach for a bit more but it is just it's a it's a roller coaster mm-hmm. from the start to the end like I was really worried about this film I was mm-hmm. I was worried that they would get it wrong and I was worried that the, the tone would be off I mean the fact that it's Warner Brothers instantly sets alarm bells off my head because they've just ruined so many films recently uh, but you can tell they've given creative control to Vogue Roberts and I think it bodes well for him as somebody who continues this trend of being an indie filmmaker who's been plucked out we were just saying before there's always a chance it's just using somebody that they know they can bully around Mm -hmm. but it doesn't appear to have been the case here there doesn't seem to have been any kind of studio problems it looks like it was just fun to make it looks like he's got his own voice and And I think the, the, the genuine flair that's in there bodes well for the future of blockbusters I mean they're not all going to turn like this because they never do uh, one final thing for me is that Brie Larson's in this film and she's one of two women in the whole thing uh, and she's given little development but she still does enough to make herself noticed and she still stands up as a, as a strong performance even if the character's not quite as strong as she is but she's fun to watch because she's Brie Larson after yeah. all like she's Academy Award I mean it's, it's, a, it's a film about the Vietnam War like I mean, yeah. I think I think you can sort of forgive the the, the gender imbalance there. Yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I get I get uh, that. But in terms of what we're watching on the screen, she yeah. is one of two female uh-huh. characters. And I mean, Kong I mean, might be a Kong might be a woman. Could be. We don't know that. Godzilla is. I know he wasn't the '98 one, but I don't think we should. The '90s. Yeah. Was different, let's just not talk about times, that. Isn't it? That's different times. Times. But yeah, it's just it's so well. Stick around for the end credits because the end credit scene has massive implications. Good but point. It's just a well. I mean, the monster design again, like he said, the monsters were inspired by um, stuff like um, My Neighbor Totoro mm. and stuff like that, like um, like Ghibli stuff. And you can tell because it is just uh, that 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 is my finishing point. It's immensely well crafted and just yeah. so so entertaining. Like I I, I want to say it again. With regard to the end uh, thing at the end, we're not going to say what it is, but it is kind of important and when you see it you kind of do go <gasps> the implications yes. for it are huge yes the implications the implications yeah. of it are really really good but the problem for, for me was that nobody knew it happened and by that way you know the entire cinema was empty uh, it was pretty much me yeah. and a few others who actually realised that there was going to be one instead mm-hmm. uh, and also and this is me going off one about Cineworld again they put the lights up so you couldn't actually see most ah. of the, the details on the screen which Wonderful. was um, annoying because I couldn't even see it and I missed the bus as well if I'd left when the credits started I would have got the number nine but because it didn't uh, because I stayed I had to wait 20 minutes for a 35 oh. and it took ages to go yeah. but it was worth it if it had been rubbish and I would have felt really bad about it but it was actually really fun and really good so I didn't yeah. feel too bad in the end Kong Skull Island have you seen it get in touch uh, let me know what you think we'll get involved with it next week and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dissect this more thoroughly but really I, I kind of find it difficult to see anything to not like yeah. apart from the fact that it is quite stupid but, mm-hmm. but it's also good at the same time it's just a, it's just a blast it's it's good to have a nice fun time at the movies. Absolutely, and this kind of starts the uh, the, the summer blockbuster period oh, yes. in March. But that's just how it goes. We've got loads more coming up through the weeks. Beauty and the Beast is next week. Uh, let's we've let's got... not ruin the good run that we've had so far in 2017. Guys. Yeah, let's, let's, let's please let's, not. Let's it's not been such that. a good year. We've also got um, Power Rangers in a few weeks, which may ruin the streak. Mm, yeah, but, possibly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, strange. Early screening said it's quite fun. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. As long so, as it's, as long as it's good at the same yeah. time. Uh, and that um, okay, that right. life 
film gets uh, premiered at South by Southwest at the end of the week. Yes, so. it's uh, it's been classified as a 15, which is leading people mm. to say, oh, could it be another Alien film? Like, not actually, not actually within the Alien universe, but like something relating to Alien in terms of like actually gory and scary, which would be interesting. But I'm not, the, the, the trailers haven't enthused me at all. I like no. the last one. I like mm. the last trailer. Fi- uh, final thing on Kong as well, it's a 12A, but it's a top end 12A. Yeah, it's, like it's, it's one of the it's goriest. It's surprisingly brutal. I think in the row in front of me, there's about 10 kids, about 10 boys, and there was like, some uh, uh, like dad type people. I think it was like a sort of scout group because I remember going to the cinemas when I was in the scouts, and they were all very young and they were all very restless, as you might imagine. And I was surprised at how gory it was and how they all kind of reacted. Yeah, fine to it. But I guess kids these days are just they're all yeah. they're different. Well, I was now. And uh, of course, uh, the soundtrack is amazing. And we're gonna play some of it right now. Good little. I think that was nice. That was that was nice. It was, it was-